Oops, hold on. How are y'all doing, YouTube? You already know what time it is. It is time for lunch break, brought to you by Rectech, powered by Kingsford, and you already know who it is. It's the unmistaken, undoubtable Chef John. That's right, it is Meat Madness Week. Not only is it Meat Madness Week, we have Academy going on right now. It's the first day of Academy. I'm so excited. I also know who else is excited. My main man, your barbecue dad, Jody Flanagan. We're gonna pass it on over to him right now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. If you're just checking us out for the first time on YouTube, make sure you hit that red rectangle. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We really would appreciate it. And it's a beautiful day out here on the wreck, tech, deck. 3,000 square feet of hardwood. That's where we're at. Mm-hmm, sure here enough. Beautiful Evans, Georgia. I'm Jody Flanagan, Barbecue Dad. With me, uh, he's on the ones and twos. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section live right over here in the comment section down below as well. What's up, Chef John? How you doing, Jody? I'm so excited today. It's the beginning of Academy Week, my friend. It is. I'm sorry. Today is Thursday. It's the meet That's and right. greet. Meet and greet, baby. They get the free food, free drinks for themselves mm -hmm. and their plus ones. We got a band coming. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll meet all the pit masters. We got the pig demonstration tonight. A lot of good stuff going on. That's right. And late night munchies tonight. Mm. Can't forget about John's late night you munchies. You know it, Jesus buddy. crackers. <laughs> um, but he does go live on Instagram, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard. So don't miss that. But we got a good show for you today. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a trusty swine apple. Um, uh, one of my favorite things to do with used pork. Uh, this is great for like tenderloins if you cut them up uh, the next day. This is great for pulled pork. Uh, this is great for uh, ribs the very next day as well. It makes it super cool. Uh, kind of dish uh, for that recycled pork. Um, but easy peasy lemon squeezy, don't ever think it. We've already got one in there for you. Oh, give you a little sneak peek of it. We're going to be using the RT700 today. We're going to be rolling right along at uh, about 300, between 300 and 350 degrees, just depending on what kind of bacon you got. If you got the thin stuff, I'd go 300. If you got the thick stuff, uh, I would go 350. Okay, um, again, we're going to be using already cooked pork. Uh, so all you have to do is just make sure the bacon on the outside is cooked because that's going to be the only raw thing. But uh, John, we got any good questions from the folks out there already? Let, well, let us know where you're watching from. Yeah. Put them in the comments section. We really do appreciate it. I was just going to tell you, you have people watching from uh, Carolina Beach, North Carolina, Gibson, Georgia, Shoot, yeah. uh, Edgefield, South Carolina, Good old Gibson. Riverview, Florida. Uh, St. Charles, Missouri in the house, Colorado everywhere. Springs in the house, Kentucky, Jody, they're from all over oh, the place. Man. Well, uh, guys, just so you know, I want all of y'all to continue watching because we've got a giveaway. We're going to do a giveaway at the end of the show. Uh, we're going to give away something really cool, so we would appreciate if you guys watch the entire show uh, and do everything that we ask of you. The first thing is, of course, leave a comment in the comment section. Um, so go ahead and let us know where you're watching from. Um, or give us uh, any tips or tricks if you've ever cooked this before. We're going to be burning the Kingsford what? Signature blend. It's a blend of mesquite, cherry, and oak blended together perfectly. Those three woods. Mm -hmm. uh, now that was for, made by Pitmasters for Pitmasters, right? Absolutely. The signature as well as the classic blend, which that's those two that I have behind me. Again, it's 100% the wood that it says on the outside of the bag. There's no fillers, no binders, no flavoring oils. 100% natural, produces about 1% of ash, and uh, you know compared to the competition, you know it, it's 100% those woods on the outside of the bag. Compared to the competition, the competition, you know, is about 35 to 45% the woods that it says on the outside of the bag. It's got a lot of the filler woods in it, um, but uh, we really do appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here. We would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. John, you got a good question from well, the someone, fans out there? Yeah, Treg Owings is watching from Moscow, he said. He said he's, he's watching, watching from Moscow. Moscow, Idaho, I think. Oh, Moscow, Idaho. Okay, yeah, think, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, but if it is Moscow, what we're thinking of, thank you so much, Mr. Treg. We That's appreciate right, you. for sure. He actually sent us 
those pot holders. Oh, that's right. That you yeah, got. Yeah, Trek. Thank you and, so much. Uh, he I also made us some uh, flies mm -hmm. for steelhead. Ooh, Shoot, yeah. Okay. Um, but swine apple. Let's get right to it. The first thing you need to get is some leftover pork. I've got our smoke box over here. The grill is set at 300 degrees and sitting at about 300 degrees. The uh, temperature on the inside up here, we're at about uh, 210 degrees. Down here at the bottom, we're at about 175 degrees, just to give you guys a uh, idea of the temperatures in the smoke box, how they vary from what the controller says. And we're just uh, essentially warming this leftover pork back up. I've got um, uh, some leftover pork butt that we cubed up. Get on here, Sherpa, because I'm gonna leave it in here for warm until we got uh, used for it. And we've also got some leftover tenderloin. We just mixed in some uh, more seasoning as well as a little bit of that gourmet Rectech barbecue sauce, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, but first things first, you gotta get leftover pork. Check, it's chilling out mm -hmm. uh, in our uh, smoke box. We're using it as a warming box next. We've got a pineapple now. What we need to do is we need to get the outside of this pineapple off. We also need to get the inside cord out, okay? So very first thing, you wanna make sure that if it doesn't sit nice and level, it sits level. This one's pretty good. But we will, uh, we'll try to just make it as, as perfect as possible, okay? And John, when you got any good questions, you just well, hit me with them, buddy. Okay, well they're all, um, all tuning in, Jody. Um, they so want to nice actually know what is the beer of the day. Uh, so uh, the beer of the day is uh, a new brand called H Two O. I'm trying to stick to my diet. I'm uh, participating in the Carnivore Keto Cut Challenge. Doing great too, buddy. Uh, performed by our buddy uh, Danny Vega. Um, so check him out. Uh, but we're also with our friends at Grill Great as well. So make sure you follow them on social media. Uh, and we've also got a uh, Facebook page for it. I believe it's called Grill Great carnivore keto cut challenge so make sure you check that out now jody uh right now if they go over to rectech.com and check out the website do we have a promo going on over there right now i don't know john oh you don't know i heard from the grapevine that that might be ending I, soon that's so what they i need too. to go over and, and check, check out rectech.com right. right. uh, because it may be still available but we were running a promo uh promotion where you could purchase an rt 340 and 220 pounds of pelts for just $6.99, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Go check it out right now at rectech.com. And I know that uh, wild side promotion for $100 off mm -hmm. uh, is going on right now as well. All right. So we took uh, the top off. You're going to need that because, you know, for presentation's sake. So the next thing we need to do is uh, we just need uh, to shave off the outside. Okay. Get yourself a good sharp knife and cut down those eyes until you can kind of barely see them. Now, nope. is there a method to this, Jody? We yeah. See, I see you're starting at the north end, going to the south end. But That's it looks right. like and you're you taking follow it off the contour. Little, yeah. Uh, you want to follow the contour and use just the amount of real estate that you have uh, with the knife. Uh, so you don't want to try to overdo it because you'll end up chopping off a bunch of pineapple that you'll need. Uh, but again, just follow the contour of the fruit itself. Um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, I like to leave the base on there, again, because I'm not going to eat the bottom of this pineapple. I also want to leave uh, as much down there so I don't puncture through. Get off any of those hard corners with those eyes. You see the eyes right there. You can also do a super cool um, spiral design like I'll show you a little later that we did with the one that's already cooking. So this one looks good. Took off most of that stuff you don't want to eat. Super easy. And you can make fruit broth uh, with this leftover pineapple skin. Fruit broth? That's right, John. You can make fruit broth with it. Okay. Guys, right. if you've ever made fruit broth, please put it in the comment section down below. Put all your hate and criticism <laughs> down there as well. If you don't think fruit broth is a real thing, put it down there uh, in the in the comment section. Now, Jody, for the people that are out here that are on the fence about buying the grill, but they don't know which size grill to get, what would you say to them? Um, so I always like to tell folks to start at one place. Uh, you need to figure out how many folks you're going to cook for on the regular, and then you need to figure out how many the maximum number of folks that you're going to cook for for the year okay so for me the maximum number is 20 um, uh, but it average about three people so you know the RT 700 and RT B 380 are perfect for me um, but again uh, all of those grills uh, you know have their own um, you know particular size for your family but what we're going to do is we're going to core this bad boy out Okay, 
just going to make us going to be safe with this. And uh, what I like to do is kind of measure how far I can go on this. You, see, you can see I have a little black mark right here that lets me know how far I can go on this knife without going through the bottom. Okay, so I kind of try to stick to that. Now, Jody, uh, Brent Bordas asked, what uh, would watermelon also work for this recipe? No, you need uh, you know a harder, more citrusy kind of fruit that's going to stay together. That watermelon is going to get kind of mushy. Um, you know, the longer you cook it, uh, pineapple tends to stay together a little bit better. Okay, but be very careful when you're doing this. There's also uh, a couple of tools that you can get on the internet uh, that'll help you with this as well. But uh, you know, just go to town, get yourself a fork, start breaking this stuff off. Start cutting at a diagonal. Okay. You try to keep it all together. You're going to knead it all together. Okay. Now, Jody, when we're talking about raw pork and fresh pineapple, um, doesn't right. the acid affect the texture of the meat? It is, John. It is. So that the you know we used to do we used to do a marinated. Uh, version of raw pork with this recipe but you know we were never ever really able you know we cooked it safely got to the proper internal temperature but you're right we were never able to kind of get that texture that we were really looking for um, so yeah you know you can safely cook and introduce raw pork um, but uh, the acidity from this pineapple is going to give it you know a, a mealy esque Okay. Uh, type of texture on the inside. Now this may take a little bit, you know, you may not have all of the tools necessary to properly do this, um, uh, but you just really want to leave, you know, a good bit of pineapple. That way when you slice through this, you're getting a good serving oh, like with that. your pork. Okay. okay. I got, you know, this damp uh, towel here to kind of hold me steady. And this, uh, this can be an art form, but you do have to be careful. You know, don't overthink it. Don't go. Don't go fast. Um, easy peasy. But John, what what uh, would you? What kind of other vessel? You know, do you think? Uh, you know, we could we could use. You know, maybe more uh, more of the vegetable style. I guess you could say like an eggplant. Yeah, eggplant would be awesome. Eggplant. I also think that uh, a mango would be really nice oh, to like maybe wow. cut a mango in half, take that big seed out of it. Okay. That would be good with some pork. But just uh, like Sherpa said, you know, some acorn squash would probably be good as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you just want to make little cuts, um, you know, and carve this bad boy out. Now you could use a core, you know, that drills down in there, but I think those slice it as well. So that's what you don't want. I wonder if this would work with little bites and you could do it with kiwi. Oh, wow, that would be uh, fancy, mm -hmm. Chef John. Like a little Man. peel it and then cut the little center out? I don't know. That's right. All right, they want to know, uh, Gilbert Gass would like to know, what kind of knife are you using today, Jim? Uh, so I've just got a about 9-inch chef knife, ladies and gentlemen, 9-inch chef knife, easy peasy. You know, there's uh, there's carving knives, there's skinnier, longer knives that you can get. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this is just a general utility knife for us here at uh, the kitchen. Uh, Chris right. Porter says uh, the grapefruit spoon would work great for this. He's oh, right. Yeah, it's that's got right. a little like serrated on one side, so you can kind of like dig in there. That's right. Very mm -hmm. good. Very good. I mm -hmm. love these suggestions. But um, we're dug out enough to show you guys, okay? You guys get the gist. You get the idea. We're going to pull out our warmed up pork. Because again, we're, we're just doing so this with some, some delicious leftovers. You could use, you know, freshly cooked stuff as well. It's going to taste. Just as fine, but I like that next day stuff. It's going to give it extra flavor. Um, don't you? Wouldn't you agree, Chef John? Yeah, for sure. Uh, really, when you let that meat uh, uh, sit in the refrigerator, and that's with anything, soups especially, Jody, chilies. Mm -hmm. That next day, it's always going to taste better. Spaghetti Absolutely. sauce. And we're just going to let that cool down just for a little bit. It's a little warm. The next thing we got to do is we got to do our bacon weave. Now, a lot of folks will uh, just wrap it and um, use toothpicks. Um, some folks like to do the bacon weave. With the bacon weave, it can be kind of bulky and it can kind of weigh down. As you can see right here on ours, oh. uh, our bacon weave kind of fell apart. It's not the best picture in the world of it. 
but it kind of fell apart. So I'm going to show you, this is what we did with the bacon weave. I'm just going to wrap it uh, like we normally do around itself. Um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I got some toothpicks here as well. We'll see which one stays on better and we'll report back to you guys. Um, but don't overthink it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You guys know how to bake a bacon weave, don't you? You guys check out our video on how to make a bacon weave on our YouTube channel. Um, you can't go wrong, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna wrap this bad boy and we're gonna start at the bottom, okay? We're gonna try our hardest to kind of overlap. And who watched the other day? Uh, you guys check it out tomorrow. We'll be wrapping some delicious uh, corn Ooh. in some bacon. We'll also be doing some delicious French fries because it is the culmination of uh, Meat Madness. That's right. You guys voted on Instagram, uh, in Instagram stories, uh, the ultimate meal. And we're going to be cooking the ultimate meal on Funday Friday. Which was really, really awesome. That Instagram uh, vote off was pretty cool. All right, so we got a little overlap that doesn't want to stick. So that's all right. We'll use our toothpick right there. Easy peasy. Don't overthink it. So right, essentially everybody. you're just rolling this thing out. Are you stretching that bacon out at all, Jody? Uh, you really want to avoid stretching it out because again, you'll end up all like us and uh, have that bacon kind of come apart and separate. Okay. This is uh, this bacon's a little bit on the thin side. Um, so I would definitely suggest, you know, using that long, thick cut stuff. You can also cut more off of the outside of the pineapple. Um, Make it a little thinner? Make it a little thinner. Okay. That way, you know, you can also, these are really big pineapples. John purchases really girthy fruit. I do. I like the girthy and, fruit. Um, you know, we could have gotten a smaller pineapple, but why get a smaller pineapple? Cheese and crackers. All right. So, Jody, for the people who want to know when stuff's going to be back in that. stock, where we're going to be, when we're going to be there, where do they need to go? What do they you need to do? You guys just need to sign up for the newsletter at rectech.com, easy peasy. Just go to uh, the bottom of any home page. That's right, go to the bottom of any home page and sign up. Put your email in where it says sign up for the newsletter. You can't go wrong. So essentially you're just stuffing it all so in I'm there. So I'm stuffing this bad boy. It is stuffed to the gill from top all the way to the bottom. And again, we left about a, about a half an inch down there at the bottom. We don't want to puncture through. Um, because again, we want to display this. Um, but look at that, that looks great, right? So good. So um, we want to season the outside. Charlie, would you go grab me some Casanova's competition rub? I thought I brought it out here. Um, but we want to season the outside of this bad boy before we cook it as well. And again, I just overlapped that bacon and we don't have a lot of toothpicks in this bad boy. No. Um, so you're not going to have a lot of that juice or a lot of that barbecue sauce kind of seeping out. Um, but uh, after you put it on the grill, it's going to cook. And it's going to look like this. This looks absolutely amazing. Bacon's a little dark, but that's all right. We'll hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. I'm going to pull this out. We're going to pull that off. That looks kind of nasty. I'm going to pull that guy out of there. And I'll maneuver this over here. We'll pull this guy out too. Pull that out. Mm, that looks absolutely looks delicious, good, Jerry. Kind of fell apart on us, but that's okay. That's what live uh, cooking's all about. So we'll just pour our sauce on, okay? Just want it to penetrate all of the crevasses. Yes, sir. Did you guys smash that share button? Share this all over social media, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All of those good things. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be having a giveaway a little bit later. Make sure you watch this entire video. We really would appreciate it. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab that bad boy. And I love these metal, these mesh metal racks. Ooh wee. That is what I'm talking about. You can also about. use your small interior shelf as transportation as well, but I gotta use this later. Jody, what's in the grill? Oh, so we got some beef ribs. Uh, we, cooked up, we cooked up some beef ribs last night for after hours. We had some left over. So these sat in the fridge all night with seasoning on them. Cooking these at 300 degrees for about six hours. Easy peasy. Don't ever think those as well. Yes. Um, but cool. I, I kind of like this because it's got two sides to it. Yeah. It's got, 
It's got the pretty bacon side kind of over here, Sherpa. Let's focus on that for right now. That looks great, doesn't it, it everybody? looks great, Jody. Um, we got a little lid for it too. So we'll just come on right here. What? Look at that. So we've got a little swine apple for you. I hope you guys like that. Now, um, on the other side, what I did was, is I just cut the eyes out in the lines that they're in. And it's actually, it'll go diagonal. So you actually kind of make a twist on the outside. Ooh, look at that. You know, when you take a, a little carving tool and uh, you just carve out the eyes, instead of trimming them off, you can carve them out that way. And this makes a great looking design uh, on the outside. So if you don't want to wrap it in bacon, um, like we attempted to here, um, yes. It looks really good without being so good, making Jerry. as well. That looks great, doesn't it? It really does. It absolutely kills. Now, uh, this Let question is coming cool from Colorado Barbecue Babe. Yeah. Uh, she says, could you uh, have set this in a cast iron so that you don't dump sauce all in your grill? Absolutely, you could have. Um, but the cool thing about the grill is we have that drip pan. You guys can see it. Drip, it's running down the drip pan and it's going into our um, grease bucket down here. Um, so yeah, but you could have absolutely have used the cast iron skillet. There'll be a towel. Yeah. Well, um, now, Jody, while we're talking about the grill, can we just go ahead and go over some of the other features on the no, RT700? Absolutely. So the RT700, it's our flagship model. It's got, of course, the Y pellet Wi-Fi connectivity to it. But of course, it's got that PID. Charlie, cut the music off. Uh, the PID controller is going to be the gold standard when it comes to temperature control, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you've also got a light on the inside of the grill. Holy smokes, that's right. You've got a light on the inside of the grill. Six-year warranty, 40-pound hopper located on the back side of the grill. Absolutely amazing. It fits 40 pounds of pellets. Average about a pound an hour burn, right? Yeah. So you get through about 40 hours of continuous cooking. This one's on the competition cart. Um, if uh, you're gonna be moving your grill, mm -hmm. you're gonna be going to competitions, wheeling it over grass, gravel, rock, or sand, um, you gotta get that competition cart. Um, sometimes we run those on sale, yes, sir. Chef John. Yes sir, we sure um, do. This one's also pictured with that smoke box. Again, you can use it for a warmer. You can also smoke your cheeses, your meats, your sausages, um, summer sausage. Uh, you can uh, warm up big pots of chili. You can do oyster roast. You really can. Um, salmon. You're really only limited by your imagination. Yeah, you really Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Really are. A lot of folks will uh, actually put a smoke tube in there mm -hmm. and then uh, and not turn the grill on, but run it in fan mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you uh, run the grill in test mode and run it in fan mode, it, it just runs the fan. Uh, so that way you can cold smoke right. at those uh, 80 to, to 90 yeah. degree temperatures. You're dropping knowledge right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. So let's get this bad boy uh, off of here. And let's slice into her because she's had a she's had a minute to cool, kind of cool down. Now I packed this one full Ooh. with some And what some did you sauce over. that thing with, Jody? So I sauced it with um, our friends. Uh, at uh, Blues Hog with Blues Hog Competition Barbecue Sauce. Love it. Now, because we got uh, Academy this week, we'll be mm -hmm. using some of that good stuff. Um, get this out of here as well. But guys, make sure you subscribe to the Kingsford and Rectex YouTube channel. We've got a lot of amazing content coming out for you. Uh, I don't want you to forget about that. Um, but we cooked this thing at uh, 350. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 350 degrees uh, for about an hour. All we had to do is get that bacon uh, good and super crispy. Um, and then we poured some barbecue sauce on it, let it sit on there for about five to 10 more minutes. Um, but this is gonna be the butt, this is gonna be the end of this bad boy. And uh, if I choose right, let me get a pair of gloves on. Always gotta be sanitary. Yeah, man. got to. You know other people are going to be eating this. I'm going to get me a piece of this for mm, sure. John, Jake. you're always trying to get a piece of something. You know it, buddy. <laughs> am I right, everybody? All right, come on in here. Get on here, Sherpa. Hopefully I go deep enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, cutting through a toothpick there. Oh, yeah. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Some of that left Man, over that looks absolutely pork delicious. deliciousness. Look at that. Smash that share button. Share this all over the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Smash that red rectangle. Um, but uh, again, that pork was already cooked. Leftovers, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm. Look at that right there. That looks absolutely amazing. All the juice from the pineapple, yep. the pork mixing together, that bacon, the And it makes a great sauce. party 
kind of uh, recipe because everybody kind of stands around the cutting board and mm -hmm. some folks will grab some bacon like this, <clears throat> put it in their mouth. Some folks will, will grab some pineapple, but um, if you do put toothpicks in it, make sure you take the toothpicks out and remember where you put them in. Yeah, for sure. Unlike me, I left in a couple on that one. But super, super cool and easy thing to do with your leftover pulled pork, leftover tenderloins, leftover loins, um, leftover really anything. Be good with uh, chicken uh, mm -hmm. as well. I wouldn't do beef. Beef would not be one of my favorite things to do with it. Right. Um, but you got a good question, John. Yes. Uh, so they're all blown away by the fan mode cold smoke, Jerry. That's right. Now absolutely. they want to know, can you do that with any of our grills? Uh, you can. You can. You Any grill that will go into test mode, you can just run the fan on those grills. Um, that is a little known uh, awesome. secret that yep. a lot of folks don't realize. Yeah. Now, Tom Taylor asks, who are the guest chefs for Academy this weekend? Uh, so this weekend, we've got Carrie Chastain, uh, one of the top 10 KCBS mm -hmm. cooks in the nation in every category. We've also got Lee and Lonnie Smith from Bubba Grills. Carrie's from Hold Your Horses Barbecue. Lee and Lonnie are the uh, whole hog kings yep. in Georgia. They do sure a really enough. good whole hog cook. Um, but uh, Lee and Lonnie Smith with Bubba Grills and... Um, Carrie Chastain with Hold Your Horses. You've also got Chef John Pinnell yeah. with Rec Tech Barbecue, yeah. Chef Greg Muller with Rec Tech Barbecue, and then yours truly, Jody Flanagan with the Rec barbecue Tech Barbecue dad. as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we'll be holding it down this weekend. We are. We're looking to come in uh, one, two, and three. Chef Greg, Absolutely. Jody, and John. Not necessarily in that order, but we're looking to come in one, two, and three. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, uh, but a lot of... Uh, a lot of smack talking is going to be going talking. down this week. Yes. Uh, we got any other good questions? Yeah, Gilbert Gass uh, asked. Pretentious barbecue. Sure pretentious says. barbecue. Uh, Gilbert Gass asked, what type of pork could you use to stuff the pineapple with? Rib meat, loin, or chops? All of that. All of that. Are, that's really, really good suggestions. I have done it with everything. You know, we've got a mixture of um, pork butt mm -hmm. that was chopped and then tenderloin that I chopped up as well. Mm. Uh, you could also use rib meat. Rib meat is traditionally you know, awesome, especially if the ribs are already individually cut up and you just yeah. pull out the bones. You can actually slide that stuff right into that crevasse of that pineapple. That's awesome. That's a great tip. Yeah. That's a great tip. And, it's, and you know, however big your crevasse is, however much meat that you can actually fit in there. I love it. I um, bet you do. <laughs> So you went over pretty much everything else they had, Jody. They're super. They really love the yep. tip about the cold smoke. I got a whole bunch yeah. of people out here that said they're going to try that yeah, real absolutely. soon. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. But again, the, the, the grill is running at 300 degrees. If you come over here, Sherpa, we can prove it to them. The bottom rack is about 150 degrees. So you know, I can run it at 180 on low, and uh, you're probably looking at about 100 degrees in there. So I mean, uh, the, the smoke box is a great option to, yeah. to smoke at lower temperatures or you know, if you find yourself filling up the 700, instead of having to buy another grill, yeah. it's a cheaper option of really uh, the smoke box to mm -hmm. give you more uh, surface area, gr grilling area. Now, Jody, what else do we have going on today? Uh, I was about to put this in my mouth, John. So we got <laughs> uh, Product Spotlight later on Facebook. We've got Mix It Up. We've got Late Night Munchies at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard. And uh, that's it for today. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. It's full day. And we got Academy. And meet and greet. Meet and greet, baby. That's right, baby. Um, but but every, I told you I'd give something away. So everybody that is watching, you've actually got to go over to my YouTube channel. There you go. At BBQ Dad Jody. And uh, you've got to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to pick from my subscribers. Uh, and I will let Chef Greg know the winner next Thursday so he can announce it live on YouTube on this channel right here. So you gotta go love it. find my channel, at BBQ it. Dad Jody, just search for that. Jody Flanagan, Barbecue Dad. Subscribe to my channel, and uh, I'm gonna pick from my subscribers the winner. I'm gonna announce, get Chef Greg to announce it next week. All right, Just looking for a thousand subscribers, just I so that. I can go live. I've already subscribed, just so you know. Thanks, John, yes, that sir. means a lot. So last question, um, so if anybody out there wants to get in touch with a live person, they have a question about their grill, they'd yeah. just rather talk to somebody than email us, what do they need to do? Give us a call. 706-922-0890. Folks sitting up there in that wonderful office will actually answer the phone within a couple of rings, talk you through it. Anybody that answers the phone is going to own the grill and use it regularly, so they're going to be able to answer any questions that you have. They're going to be the experts that you want on your side, on your team, in your family. Um, so give us a call if you have any questions regarding anything. If they don't know the answer to a, a recipe question or something, you know, they'll get us in contact with you. You can also email us, 
you can email me, Jody at Rectech. He's Chef John at Rectech, and he's Chef Greg at Rectech.com. Easy peasy, just reach out to us. Follow us on all social media and, and, and message us as well. We're super easy to get in touch with. Um, but again, if you're having any issues, if you have any questions, um, call us, 706-922-0890. Somebody's going to pick up the phone during... Uh, business hours we also have an after hours phone number if you bought a grill you got that as well so please give us a call where you're um, we will not try to avoid you like other companies we want to fix your issue we want your grill running and uh, performing sure at its optimum capability sure. so sure if there's any issues we want to jump ahead of them um, but again that's part of being in the rec tech family you get that awesome customer service that industry leading customer service um, manufacturer mm -hmm. customer service that's right um, unmatched it's true it but is guys. the truth. That, wait, before you get off, yep. tell them one more time your YouTube channel. Uh, at Jody Flanagan Barbecue Dad or search at BBQ Dad Jody. You've got to look for it. Um, but uh, uh, if you have subscribed to Rectech, I'm one of these suggested pages. You so go. you can go to Rectech and you can scroll down. Uh, you can see suggested pages. I think it says Rectech Owners on there. Um, so Jody Flanagan Barbecue Dad or Barbecue Dad Jody. Um, just search for those and uh, subscribe to my channel, and I will be giving away a. Uh, what are you gonna give away? Dang, man. Are you looking for a giveaway? I don't know. I am. Man. They've been, uh, you know, uh, they've been wanting um, those wild sides to move. So let's just give away a wild side. What? <laughs> hey, hey, why not? Wow. You know the 105 that. people that are watching are really I impressed. They're gonna freak out. <laughs> yeah. I bet they're gonna freak out. But guys, tell your friends about this. Share this video on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and subscribe to the Rec Tech social media, and then subscribe to my uh, YouTube. We really would appreciate it. Just try to get to a thousand members so I can go live for you guys. Um, but we did a swine apple today. Um, we've got a fresh pineapple. We cored it out. We stuffed it. Mm -hmm. stuffed it full of some uh, leftover pulled pork from yesterday. Uh, we trimmed off the outside of it. Uh, we smoked it at 350 degrees for about, uh, wrapped it in bacon, uh, cooked it at 350 degrees for about an hour. We just needed that bacon to cook and render down. And this mm. is that beautiful production that we got. Absolutely amazing. This has got a beautiful taste to it. Again, a little bit of sweetness from the pineapple. I put that Ron Screaming Pig Rub uh, extra seasoning in on that pork. So we've got a good balance of sweet and heat in there. Mm -hmm. mm. And then when you glaze it with that barbecue sauce, son, ooh. But again, you ain't got to wrap it in bacon. Yeah. You ain't got to. You ain't got to. But it can taste delicious when you do. So delicious. But make sure you subscribe to the Rectech YouTube channel as well as the Kingsford YouTube channel as well as the Barbecue Dad Jody YouTube channel. Right, John? That's right. We got any other questions before we dip they're, out? They're all going right now to subscribe. All right, make sure you go to Rectech.com and check out the special RT340 220 pounds of pellets for $6.99. Right now, it's not going to be there forever. It's eventually going to go away. Check it out. You can add pellets to any grill purchase. Uh, that's not uh, going to last forever as well, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and take the advantage. Uh, we really appreciate everybody on YouTube watching us live. It means the world to us. Um, reach out to us if you need anything. We love you. We thank you. And from everybody here at the Worldwide Headquarters of RecTech, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And we'll see you at where, John? The RecTech. That's right. Do, do, do. do, do. do. Do, 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 wreck tech lifestyle, set it hey, and come get it, you know. when the sun starts going down, hey, hey. live your life, we out.